A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Jonathan Sobolski has a background in marine ecology, science communication, and athletics. And this interdisciplinary perspective is key to how he sees the next stage of global conservation, something he calls climate fitness. If we can find ways to reach our physical fitness goals, can we also get the planet back in shape? I'm a marine biologist and a historical ecologist. It's my job to tell the story of ecosystems through time. And in 2016, I moved from the United States to Hong Kong, a city best known for its financial portfolio, so that I could study its marine portfolio. And my current research is on corals. Now, corals are wonderful animals that grow and build coral reefs, the most biodiverse marine habitat on Earth. More than 25% of all marine life relies on them. I tried to identify their past greatest threats, so that we can give them the best chance for survival. And especially in Hong Kong, corals have had to adapt to the growing human footprint on this earth. Unfortunately, my research reaffirms a global trend. Corals are sick. How do we get here? Why haven't we done more to stop this? We have failed to combat climate change because our mentality around climate change is wrong. You see, in the 60s and 70s, science was already fairly conclusive on this whole climate thing. And governments were taking big steps to combat our greenhouse gas emissions. But then the climate issue became political, facts got mixed with sensationalism. I'm not just a marine biologist but I'm also a lifelong competitive athlete and a coach. I want to show you how my competitive athletics, not my scientific background, is what has shaped my mentality and drove me to be the conservationist that I am today. And how I think that if we are all a bit more athletically minded, then we'll all be much more climate conscious. One of the first things I learned as an athlete was that most of our barriers are not actually physical, they're mental. And it's the same with climate change. So that's why I'm gonna work with you right here and now in your first climate personal training session on how we're gonna start winning against the climate crisis. First step on our fitness journey is with mentality. How many of you have ever had a fitness milestone or set a health target or played on a sports team? Anyone? Yeah. Then you will understand what I mean when I say we become goal-oriented but task-focused. We use long-term goals to help us to complete difficult everyday tasks. Do you want to climb that mountain? First, you start by taking steps. Do you want to win the game? First, you go to practices. Listen, I don't win every weightlifting competition I do, and my ultimate goal of competing in the Olympics will probably never be achieved. But it's important that I look back at those days of dedicated training and I realize I am a better, stronger person than I was and I want to keep improving. That is the definition of the athlete mentality, our desire to keep working. What if instead of looking at the Global Climate Olympics as unwinnable, we focus on our personal everyday wins? Today, I recycled everything properly. Today, I did not eat meat. Today, I took public transit every time I went outside. Now, are these earth-shattering goals that are gonna solve the climate crisis? (laughs) No, but they're a start, and they will lead to something bigger. Remember, you cannot climb that mountain until you start. Big goals are built by small wins. Do one thing that actively improves your climate fitness. Maybe it's actually using that reusable water bottle and cutlery. Maybe it's cutting meat out of just one meal a day. Maybe it's always taking public transit when you need to get somewhere. Anything, do it, I don't care. And you know what? 
just like burpees, I know they're gonna be tough at the beginning. But every day you do it, see yourself doing it. Build a routine. And through time, you will start to identify as someone who can do the climate fitness thing. And for the record, I am not perfect. I still struggle every day with both my climate and my personal fitness. My biggest weaknesses are I eat too much meat, and I have really poor ankle flexibility. But I recognize this, and I am also working at this every day to try and better myself. Because even I can use a reminder of, hey, I do the climate fitness thing. <laughs> no, most of my clients have simpler goals. I want to lose weight, or I want to get stronger. Why is it that simple? Because they understand what they want, and they trust a process to get them there. So why can't we do this for our climate fitness? We've known for decades what greenhouse gas emissions are doing to our planet. Emissions that get trapped in our atmosphere and create an earth blanket that is heating the earth at temperatures too fast for things to adapt. Emissions that are human driven, meaning it's both our fault and up to us to fix it. So why is this climate information so difficult to turn into climate action? The road to your climate fitness is not actually that steep. Because yes, the Global Climate Olympics is a mountain. But your personal journey is about finding the mentality to be willing to climb it. It just takes one step at a time. But we can do it, team. We just have to start. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in Hong Kong. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Ten Hao. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Matosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.